Hello, Duffy Tavern. Where the elite meet to eat, Archie Demand is speaking. Duffy ain't here. Oh, hello, Duffy. Tonight, uh, Marie McDonald, the body. Huh? Well, take your message, Duffy. Now divide by four. <laughs> You gotta see this, McDonald's up to your Sunday school face with a Saturday night figure. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of the week ain't bad neither. Uh, brother, you think them dishes in the kitchen is back. Hmm, <laughs> great name, Duffy. You got a line on the ball. Huh? You said that when you met Mrs. Duffy. Then you find out there was a chain attached to the ball, huh? Hooked up, and you said not a talk like that behind your wife's back. Although I admit there's plenty of room for conversation. Yeah. Yeah, that's an insult. <laughs> uh, okay. Goodbye. <laughs> what are you laughing? What's so funny? <laughs> Mr. Moriarty just told me a very funny story. <laughs> you know, it, it seems it was a traveling sale. Hold it, Eddie. I got to tell you something that I'm busting out all over. You know, Marie McDonald, the movie star? Yeah. We're in love. Oh. Now, what was that funny story you were going to tell me? Never mind. I can't top yours. <laughs> uh, you, you mean to tell me that you're in love with another movie star? Is that redundant? Go <laughs> on. Well, the last time it was Esther Williams, and before that it was Jean Sharon, and before her it was Dorothy Lamore. You finished? No, I can go all the way back to Clara Bowles. <laughs> <laughs> but this time it's different, Eddie. With me and Marie, our love burns like hot ashes. You no, know, we were cremated for each other. <laughs> She's really my type. Yeah, I know your type, you you got to be a redhead, a blonde, or a brunette, be tall or short, and must breathe. <laughs> now, Eddie, this time it's different, you know? The minute I seen this, Marie, I knew she held for me a fatal vaccination. <laughs> you mean fascination? I mean vaccination. Such punk gratuit is like a shot in the arm. <laughs> Man, when, when did you first see it? Uh, last Saturday night. You see, I had uh, just got me 15 bucks paycheck, so, uh, being loaded, I, uh, I go over to Lefty's Metropolitan Museum of Fools, see, and, uh, looking for a sucker, see. Well, so when I leave Lefty's, I decide to go to the movies with the 50 cents that I got left. <laughs> so I go over to the video, and I, uh, plank down two bits for a ticket, and with the other two bits, I buy me customary five bags of popcorn. Five bags? Yeah. Well, to make the long story short, I get bored with the movies. You know, the first three features was lousy, and the, the fourth one was a western that I had seen before, and suddenly the main feature comes on. <clears throat> uh, getting Gertie's got it. And for the first time, I see this Marie McDonald. Eddie? I was so struck I couldn't touch that fifth bag of popcorn. <laughs> what a dame. Ever since I seen her, she's got me walking around on a cloud. But with a girl like that, Marie McDonald, that cloud better have a silver fox lining. Mm, I see what you mean, Eddie, but the letter I wrote her covered that. Uh... You mean you wrote that you was a millionaire? Well, I was subtle about it. I just mentioned that I had a swimming pool, Cadillac. Free suits. <laughs> did you uh, did you tell about them oil wells of yours in Oklahoma? Oh, I handled that very subtle too. I just mentioned offhand that Grandmama was an Indian. <laughs> yeah, and I thought I was being fantastic. Oh, fantastic is as fantastic does. One D, two D, I get you G. Two, two G, three G, you get me G. Two, three G, uh, uh, three G, three. Hey, Ike, what number comes after three G? Uh, Kenzie. Oh, thanks. 
3D, 10D, let's be friends. Finnegan, I love it. Look, what are you so happy about tonight? Well, I heard you was in love again, and that makes me happy, too. Oh. So here, I brought you some roses to give to the dance. Well, thanks, Finnegan, but uh, maybe we better remove the rest in peace ribbon now, huh? Well, personally, I thought it gave it that little extra touch. Hmm. Well, another thing, Finnegan, uh, not, uh, not that I want to look a guy like you in the mouth, but, uh... <laughs> them roses smell a little faded. Do a fraction of my watch. Put on a little of that stink of yours. That eau de violet. Oh, don't you think maybe the dame would suspect something? So what? It ain't every day you run across roses that smell like violets. I, uh, uh, who's the lucky dame this time, Art? Finnegan, this time I'm the lucky dame. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm the lucky guy. Well, make up your mind, Art. Uh, well, anyhow, the lady in question happens to be Marie McDonald. The body, you know. Oh. Well, Art, we all gotta go sometime. <laughs> Finnegan, the dame is still alive, which is more than I can say for you. Oh, hello, Miss Duffy. I, uh, I hear you're in love again. Yep. It was love at first sight. Hmm. Love at first sight. Don't make me laugh. If I was you, I'd believe in love at first sight. If a guy takes a second look, you're dead. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, I got everything that Marie McDonald has and then some. What a lot of whale of a difference that then some makes. <laughs> Archie, I'll take that last remark with a dose of salt. <laughs> I would, uh, I'd just like to know what M- Marie w- McDonald would want with you when she can go out with stars like Clark Abel and Van Johnson. Miss Duffy, them Hollywood glamour dames is tired of them guys. They're crying for new blood. <laughs> New good old H2O. <laughs> ah, you're a jerk. You certainly turn a pretty phrase. Anyway, <laughs> you should talk with some of the antique characters you go out with. Like, for instance? Like that guy who was out with Wednesday night, that G.I. Joe from the Civil War. <laughs> Archie, he wasn't that old. He wasn't, huh? The guy was so bent over, all he had to do was drop his arms, and he'd be walking on all fours. <laughs> what a romantic couple you two must make. I can just see you now, sitting in the parlor, and whispering sweet nothings into his ear trumpet. <laughs> well, age ain't everything. It so happens that he's very sweet and kind, and, and very affectionate. The way he holds my hand. Well, he's got to. If he ever lets go, he'll fall flat on his face. <laughs> Don't compare that guy to Marie McDonald.
Uh, Miss Archie, look, leave us faces. If this girl ever did say she'd marry you, you'd run. Hey, wait a minute. Are you wearing perfume? It wafted over to you, huh? <laughs> yeah, Eddie, it's that uh, new stuff that uh, bachelors irregardless. <laughs> Put out by Prince Machiavelli. Hmm. <laughs> now, Miss Archer, now look, she ain't gonna think you're Santa Claus just because you smell like Christmas night. Obviously not, but when she reads how wealthy I am in the column of my old pal Walter Winchell, she... give me that phone. I'll call him now. Hello, uh, Walter Winchell, please. Hello, Wally. Uh, <coughs> Archie. Huh? Hold the line. <coughs> okay. Hello? Who's this? Uh, Mr. Winchell's secretary. Look, this is Archie. Of... Hold the line. Okay. Hello? Who's this? Walter? Oh, Walter the office boy. Well, <laughs> look, kid, I got a scoop for the boss. Tell him that Marie McDonald, uh, better known as the body, and that wealthy playboy, Archie, uh, better known as the wallet, uh, are uh, carrying on a Candlestein romance. <laughs> okay, kid, shoot it at him. Now, let's see. Who else? Uh, how about Hedda Hopper? Oh, yeah. The old pal. Hello? Well, had it? Are you kid? <laughs> what are you wearing on your head it <laughs> these days? <laughs> yeah, this is Archie. How did you know? <laughs> well, uh, look, Hedda, I got an item for you. Uh, beauteous Marie McDonald is nuts about what wealthy bistro owner? <laughs> Beauty and the bistro manager. Yeah, <clears throat> quiet, Eddie. Uh, Hedda, uh... Well, look, uh, you might just mention that uh, we have been seen around town dancing the rumba cheek to cheek. <laughs> oh, thanks, Hattie. <laughs> Miss Archer, if you like this Marie McDonald, why don't you cut out this big shot stuff and just be yourself? You can't do that, Eddie. You see, you and me love me for what I am. We do? Yeah, but for a movie star, I got to play it big, which gives me an idea. Hey, Finnegan. Uh, oh, that's Finnegan, good. Uh, look, I want Marie McDonald to think I got a lot of dough, so when she gets here, run down to Cohen's Candy Store. The Cohen's Candy Store. And call me up. Call you up, yeah. Yeah, and make out like you're me broker. Stock a point. Stock, block, and hurry up. Don't stand there waiting for the brain to come in. Here she comes. <clears throat> here she comes now. Look at it there, already. Hmm? Yeah. She's sure as pretty as a picture. Yeah. Get a load of that frame. <laughs> uh, good evening. I take it that you're, uh... Marie McDonald. Yeah. It's a very nice thing to be, too. <laughs> well, Miss McDonald, uh, welcome to Duffy's Tavern. Oh, thank you. I'm supposed to meet someone here named Archie. A uh, tall, handsome, distinguished-looking gentleman, uh... Very wealthy? Yes. I'm he. You? You're Archie? You sound incredible. <laughs> what did you expect to find? Some bum? That's just it. I didn't. Your letter said you were very wealthy. So? Then how do you happen to be working in a place like this? I'm eccentric. <laughs> Besides, uh, <clears throat> this tavern was left to me years ago by the will of me great grandpater. You know me. That's me, Pater, twice removed. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> enough talk on an empty stomach. Uh, would you care to uh, partake of some cuisine? Well, I, I can't stay very long. Oh, I... just for dinner. Who'll drive me home? Uh, the dinner will. <laughs> <laughs> Please, come back to the kitchen and get Miss McDonald some food. Well, Marie, uh, leave us talk about us. Uh, tell me, honey, you got any hobbies? Oh, well, I like 
swimming and money and football and money and baseball and money. Baseball, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, baby, leave us start pitching. <clears throat> Let me take a look at you. Hmm. Honey, how would you like to have your neck choking with Tecla pearls? Hmm. How would you like to have them gams of yours swathed in nylons? How would you like to have your whole body covered over... No, that'd be kind of silly. <laughs> excuse me. Hello? Oh, hello, Penny. Uh, excuse me, Marie, it's me, Broker, uh, calling from the curb. Uh, uh, how are you, uh, J.P.? <clears throat> yes, uh, this is A. Uh, listen, uh, J.P., I want you to buy me uh, 10,000 shares of DD&T. <laughs> Huh? Well, uh, <clears throat> hold on to the Sears Roebuck, but, uh, sell out on maternity ward. <laughs> but, uh, look, J.P., keep it kind of quiet. I, uh, don't want the bears to know that I've gone bull. <clears throat> That's all, J.P., and, uh, don't call me again. I'm in conference. Get it? Uh, now, where was me, Marie? Oh, yeah. Honey, I love you. Archie, are you trifling with my emotions? Not yet, but I'm leading up to it. <laughs> now, look, baby. Leave us face it. You and me was meant for each other, and I... Excuse me. Hello? Now, look, J.P., I told you not to call me. What? U.S. Motors just might would cook a monger copper? <laughs> well, uh, quick, buy 2,000 shares of preferred and uh, 3,000 shares of ordinary life. <laughs> okay, P.J. <clears throat> now, look, baby, I... Uh... Archie, I'm afraid I'm taking you away from your business. My business? <laughs> Means nothing to me, honey. Stick with me and I'll give it to you. <laughs> Hello? Look, J.P., I told you not to bother me again. Now, as I was saying, Marie, I... Listen, you dopey lunkhead. Oh, excuse me, Duffy. <laughs> I, I thought it was another lunkhead. <laughs> what, look, what, wait a minute. I'm kind of busy right now. Huh? I should get off the phone and, and clean the tin cans out of the back room? Uh... Okay, thanks, old man. Get off the phone and clean the tin cans out of the back room. It's a Wall Street code. Oh. Means I should get uh, rid of uh, Albuquerque Tell and Tell and uh, clean up with Universal Can. <laughs> now, uh, look, honey, you and me could make beautiful music together. Or am I alone in my thinking? Well, nobody's crowding you. <laughs> Maybe I ain't made myself clear. Marie... I'm talking about you and me walking down the bridal path. <laughs> I assume that surely the feeling must be nuptial. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Archie, are you asking for my hand? Well, yeah, but it's understood, of course, that the rest of you goes with it. <laughs> what do you say, Marie? Will you marry me? Archie? Yes. Uh, what was that again? <laughs> yes. I'll marry you. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cat, I'm talking about the preliminaries, and she wants to get right into the main bout. <laughs> Marie, uh, don't you think I'm kind of rushing things, though? What do you mean? Well, I'm a kind of a guy who believes in long engagements. How long? Oh, Ten or fifteen years. Oh. oh, I couldn't wait that long, darling. Let's get married right away. Let's go out right now and buy a big diamond engagement ring. Oh, yeah. And then we can go on a nice long honeymoon on one of your yachts. Yeah. And then we'll come back and move into our beautiful big mansion. Yeah. You're happy, aren't you, dear? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I must call Mother and tell her the news. Where's the phone booth? 
Right over there. Here's a slug. <laughs> Holy cat, am I in a gym? Miss Duffy. Miss Duffy, look, you got to help me get an annulment. <laughs> now, here's what I want you to do. Oh, Finnegan, I'm glad you're back. Garage, what you hang up on me for? We were just starting to make a fortune. <laughs> yeah, but we got to lose it quick. Now, here's what I want you and Miss Duffy to do. Yeah. Uh, come here, yeah. Eddie, take over for a minute, will you? Okay. If a body meets the body coming through the right, it wins the body. I can't imagine why. <laughs> to make to you. I, I hate to say this, honey, but I can't marry you. I've just been toying with your heart. Archie, you mean you're a cat? To the core. <laughs> you see, the truth is I'd like to marry you, but I can't on account of me family. Oh, well, your mother and father can come and live with us. Me wife, too? <laughs> your wife? Yep, that's me problem, Marie. I'm poured over by two women. What am I going to do? Well, if you love me, you can't love her. So, therefore... Please, the situation is confused enough without simplifying it. (laughs) (laughs) And wait a minute. Duck, quick. Here she comes now. Oh, so this is the woman who is breaking up my home. Who is driving me to desperation. Oh, how can you be so cruel, so wicked? So heartless. Gee, that's a pretty dress you're wearing. (laughs) Archie, this is your wife? Yep. Haven't you got a better reason for not marrying me? (laughs) Yes, I have. Uh, Hello, Daddy. (laughs) And there it is, Marie. My son, my son. Just a second. How old are you, Archie? Uh, my last birthday? Yes. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight? Hmm. Well, I'm prematurely old. 
And how old are you, little boy? Uh, Thirty-two. <laughs> but that makes you four years older than your father. Mm. Mm. How do we get out of this one, Pop? <laughs> It's uh, simple. You see, Marie uh, Clifton, my son here, was an incubator baby, and oh. uh, some jerky intern turned up the heat too high, and it aged him very quick. Hmm, <laughs> you uh, don't look much like your father. No? I guess that's because I was born out of town. <laughs> So, Marie, you see, this is my family. <clears throat> there, you have it in a nutshell. I couldn't think of a more appropriate place. <laughs> but, Archie, I still want you. Uh, Daddy, did you tell Miss McDonald you was wiped out in the stock market? <gasps> wiped out? Son, wherever did you hear this terrible news? Well, Arch, I was a stockbroker, wasn't I? Finnegan! <laughs> oh, oh, so that's it, is it? Oh, I'm getting out of this place, and fast. Wait a minute, Marie. Where are you going? Back to my husband, you can't. Back to... How can people be that deceitful? Uh, Daddy. Daddy, can I have a new yo-yo for Christmas? Ah, oh, shut up. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.